Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to meet Bite Frost by Fat Shark. It is known as an HD digital system and the question today is, is it the DJI killer? But the real reason for this video is not just to show you a quick unboxing or show you a little bit of fly footage. For the guys that actually went out and bought Bite Frost or are planning on buying Bite Frost, this video is going to show you all about it, the specs, how to use it, how to set it up, how to install it, and how to fly and how to enjoy it. And also for the guys that are considering to buy it, you're going to be able to see, is it worth buying? Okay, pilots, meet Bite Frost. This is by Fat Shark. It is the HD digital system. DJI just recently dropped the digital system and it is going bonkers. Everybody loves it. A lot of guys aren't a fan of it. One of the big pros here is this system is not going to be proprietary where you can only use their cameras. This is not a frequency hopping system. So it's just like an analog system where you will occupy a channel just like any other system. This is a quick unboxing of it. You get stickers, you get a little film sheet thing to like wipe down your monitor. You get your monitor. You get a little bit of download instructions for getting your manual and things like that, which there's really not much support on it yet. It's important that anybody who's bought this system or is going to buy this system in the very near future, that this is a beta system. What they are saying, though, is there's not going to be much for upgrades as far as hardware. The only thing that should change should be the actual firmware. So you should be able to buy the system, and then you can enjoy the updates and upgrades as they come out. The VRX is built to carry and hold the 18650 canister for the batteries. It's not the regular one with the built-in battery. It's the one that takes the two 18650s. So you'll need those, and you'll also need a charger for it. You got your little remote control. Let me show you how the batteries go in if you're not familiar with it, but you, most people who run Fat Shark are familiar with this. These are two 18650s, they're about seven bucks a piece. You can get them on any drone store or you can get them from any vape store. This battery pack case does not allow you to charge the battery, so you'll have to buy a battery charger as well. That part I'm not really a fan of. I think there should be a USB portion. It's pretty sweet the way the battery pack just clips to the back of the monitor, which is also being, um, the title for it is VRX. This is your VRX, and then the cord just loops around and plugs into the DC plug. There is also a plug for... Type C, which is the new USB that all the new phones are coming with. You've also got a little portion here in the bottom where you can twist in a stand or a tripod of some sort. I'm going to show you mine so you can see what mine looks like. I've got one of these for my DSLR camera, and it just screws right into the bottom, and then you're able to set your tripod next to you. You are going to run an HDMI cable from the monitor to your goggles. If you're running DJI, you are forced to use their goggles, and you've also got to use their camera and their module. When you're talking about Bite Frost, there's a really cool thing going on here where there is a CI key that they're giving to camera manufacturers, and you're able to basically they can manufacture cameras. So any company, Fox Ear, Caddx, any one of these companies is going to start coming out with cameras that'll work with this system. And that part right there in itself is super, super awesome. I am powering my monitor from a Type-C cable. So that means if you have a battery pack with you, then hey, you're good to go. All you got to do is plug in your battery pack or maybe if you got your vehicle nearby, generator, whatever your means of power is, you can plug it in and power it up with a Type-C cable. You do not have to be battery powered. And I absolutely love that. I bought four antennas. These are Axi 2 stubbies and they are right-hand circular polarization. They are recommending to use this type of antenna. It doesn't matter if you're going left-hand or right-hand. Seeing that we've got two modules, we've got a module on the left and we've got a module on the right, and then both modules have diversity. 
So what I've come up with is it's probably best to run an array of different antennas rather than four of the exact same antenna. One might pick up this and one might pick up the other. And because it's diversity, the module is actually going to decide which antenna is giving the best reception and is going to pick it up and it is going to use that. Kind of experiment with it and see what kind of reception I get. And I'll update you guys later in a further video. Now the camera is done with a Divimath Handshake Key IC. And what that means, if you're a qualified vendor or a qualified manufacturer, you'll be able to go through Fat Shark and get the protocol that you need to be able to run for this camera. The reason why they're doing the qualified portion is to ensure that the camera compatibility and performance meets their quality standards. Now for the OSD information, if you're recording or scanning, it'll only show on the receiver monitor, which is your VRX, and not the HDMI out. Now, the HDMI out is split out via FPGA so that the DVR latency isn't added. This allows the system to output either 6x9 or 4x3 to the HDMI while the DVR is dedicated to displaying and recording 6x9. The 4.3 mode crops the size of the HDMI image and is, you know, and it's thus lower in resolution. For the camera, it's not as simple as you think because they did not send a full package camera like when you buy a camera from Runcam or Fox Ear. You're getting the camera, you're getting mounting hardware, you're getting all kinds of stuff. This did not come like that. This came with just the camera and two screws. So the fact that I'm using the Source One, which requires a mini camera, which is technically a full-size camera, it doesn't fit. So I had to find a solution and fortunately I keep a lot of extra parts like I always tell my viewers to and I found this little cage that fits the camera perfectly by locking it in and then it'll upsize my camera. This is a very nice camera. It is the Runcam HD Zero and it's a really nice camera. What I do like about this is on the actual VTX or the hardware, the HD, whatever you want to call it, it has a spot to solder the pads if something wants to happen to your connector. So that part's pretty cool because if things go south, I have the choice or the option to go ahead and solder it up. There's, it truly makes this system plug and play. I put this thing, this whole entire system together in just a few minutes. Anybody who might be confused about this, this system does not do anything but your video. It does not handle your receiving, your flight controller, your ESCs, none of that. So you will need an entire quad to put it in. Me, I picked my Source 1. I'm taking it apart now so that way I can remove my Unify and I can install this system. If you're unsure what to use, keep in mind you do need 30x30 30 30 mounting solution in order to make this work. There's a real big treat with this system and what that is is... For example, with the DJI system, once you've got it installed and you're running it, if you decide to fly a different quad with a different camera or different anything, you're done. You're SOL. You've got to take off those goggles and you've got to set them to the side because they are useless for your regular analog stuff. The cool thing about this system is, is it intertwines and it works with everything. So what that means is, is if you plug in a regular quad, you can use your VRX, you can pick up the channel and watch it and enjoy your analog system right through the HDMI cord. You can use the DVR, which records your footage. So for me, I'm coming from a quad that was already built. It already had a VTX and a camera on it. So I'm going to desolder all of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my bite frost system and putting it here on the quad you can see it fits very nicely it's not too big you don't need a special frame so i went ahead pulled off my camera cleaned up my pads and now i'm ready to go ahead and install the new system so it's really not too much you're just taking off your camera and you're taking off your vtx so in order to get osd with the bite frost system You've got to have an open UART. You're going to need an RX and a TX for this board, which is the Mamba F7 board. I went ahead and used RX6 and TX6. I'm going to show you how to set it up inside of Betaflight. But as far as hardware goes, you do need to have an open UART. Like we talked about before, this system is pretty much plug and play. So after you've connected your connector, you've mounted your camera, you've got your TX and your RX wires ready, you do need to power your bite frost system. 
its lowest voltage accepted is 8 volts. If you do not have an onboard regulator, something that gives you 9 volts, 12 volts, something like that, which a lot of boards these days do, if you don't, you will need to find that or just go ahead and go straight to LiPo voltage and you're good to go there because this thing does handle up to 28 volts. I found a pad here and my pad is a 9 volt pad which is perfect because that's you know it's kind of minimal voltage but it's perfect and then I go ahead and I check and make sure that I have not uh, accidentally bridge the two pads seeing this is an expensive system and you can't order just the bite frost VTX at this time I did check to make sure my polarity was correct and I didn't short circuit anything because that would right there uh, that would put me in trouble so now that our board is in and connected we're gonna go ahead and solder up our TX and our RX to our actual VTX board from bite frost I'm gonna show you guys real quick in the ports tab how to set this up You've got to set it up specifically and you've got to select the UART that you picked and then you've got to set the speed to 19200 or 19200. Once you've set that up, then your OSD will work. And you've got two sets of OSD in a sense. You've got your OSD that's in your goggles, and then you've got your OSD that's on your VRX. And I'm going to show you more about that and how to set that up and how to use it. And that is done all through the MSP connection, which you should be familiar with, and it'll be inside of the Betaflight Ports tab. It'll be basically running off of the same thing back in the day like old flight controllers. Well, flight controllers back in the day didn't used to work this way, but all modern flight controllers do. And you'll come in here to the ports tab, and you'll go to the UART that you have. We soldered up to UART 6, which was RX6 and TX6. And then as you can see, I dropped my speed to 19200, save and reboot. As far as Betaflight goes, you're done. There's nothing else you need to do. Go ahead and secure your VTX in, and then you're ready to put your quad back together. The one thing that you might think that you need Betaflight for in the future is going to be your firmware flashing. Well, guess what? That is not true, and your firmware flashing is all done through the SD card. You'll see here when I'm on the bench, I'll be able to power this up and run it and test it. You'll be able to do all this right from your Type-C cable, as you see I have plugged in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and power up my quad and power up my VRX and I'm going to make sure that the two are talking and they're communicating. Plus, I'm excited to see what the what the video is going to be like. When you first plug it in, the VRX does an automatic scan and it's going to scan and pick up all the available channels. So if there's more than one person out in the field, it is going to check for that and it is going to let you see everybody that is live whether they're running the new bite frost system or whether they are running an analog system they'll all be able to be viewed right here and you'll be able to select which one you want to select there is a password option with this and at this time they are going to keep that kind of as a beta thing because they've been having trouble with it so if you want to get frisky and you want to try it go ahead but they're saying don't mess with it at this time me personally I'm not going to risk it, plus I don't need a password anyways. Now on the back of your VRX, there is two different options. You've got your little joystick, and then you've got your channel up, channel down. Well, clearly you know what the channel up, channel down is for. With your little joystick, you'll have an option to go up, down, left, or right. And they're going to go ahead and display a small little logo representing what they do. Like, for example, once your SD card is in and working, you'll be able to press to the right to record and to stop recording. So when you first boot it up, you're going to do your automatic scan like we just talked about. And then you're going to show your three screens. Your three screens are broken up like this. You have a left section, which shows the scan progress upon power-up, or you can initiate a scan. You have your center section, which says on air. And under that is the number of HD0 units found that are broadcasting and which channels they are on. You also have your last channel is your basically it's your last channel that you use before you power down. If you want to verify that that is your last channel used, it'll correspond to a low RF green bar 
before powering up your TX just to make sure that everything is good. Now on the right side of your screen, it shows the RF occupancy of all four HQ channels and you have six LQ channels. This may consist of all digital and analog transmission and any RF noise, including your transmitter if it's powered. The green bars indicate available channels with the smaller of the bar, the less noise and the best channel to use. Best power and scan the RX before powering on the TX to ensure you are flying on the cleanest channel. And that right there is just to give you the best results. You also have the five-way joystick, which we've already talked about. The button directions correspond to the OSD icons to the top left corner. If you press right and you check the icon to proceed to displaying the image on the screen, you may need to change the channels with the up-down channel key to acquire your transmitter. The default channel is the last channel used. So that's just simply how it's going to run. Your OSD navigation icons is the name for that little joystick, the five-way joystick, and which each one will do. And we've already talked about that, but it will disappear after seven seconds if there's no activity you know, detected. By pressing the joystick in any direction, it'll bring it up and then your next movement will decide that selection. And of course, your thought is I'll slide to the left and then press the center one and that will select it, but that does not work that way. When you're scrolling through the menu, to the right is to select it and to the left is to go back a page. Keep that in mind when you're using it. This little remote here is really cool. It allows you to get in and control all the functions of your camera and you can also set your power levels. You have three different power levels. You have 25, 200, and 450. And using this will help you with that. And you can even set your camera ID, adjust your picture, white balance, and then even reset back to your normal setting. Here I'm going to show you how it all works. You're gonna plug in your HDMI, to your goggles and to your monitor. Make sure your monitor is powered and make sure your goggles is powered. Once both are powered, there's a little switch under your goggles you might be familiar with. You have to flick that switch and then use the button on top to scroll through and it brings you through AV, HDMI, regular video, and there's some other selections I don't know by heart. But doing that will bring you to the HDMI selection and that is when anything that has appeared on your DVR or your VRX will be displayed in your goggles. So of course, everybody wants to be able to turn their power all the way up. You will hold down the right button for three seconds, it'll flash the letter C, and you can scroll up one, two, or three, and then hold it down to save, and it'll flash a quick number eight to confirm that what you did is correct. Alright pilots, we went over a lot and we went over it fast. Hopefully you guys were able to grasp everything. If not, feel free to hit the comments and I'll do my best to help. Now that you've got everything set up, you're ready to put your quad back together and take it to the sky. So of course, everyone wants to record HD footage through a digital signal with their DVR. Rather than having to use a GoPro, which I'm going to use anyways, you can go ahead and do that with an SD card right in the VRX. You can put it in through the slot that's on the side and make it really simple. Mine didn't work right off the bat. I had to format the card, which is pretty cool. The VRX gives you that function. It's important to find a comfortable place to set your VRX so that way you don't knock it down by pulling with your cord. Picking a place to put your VRX is important because you don't want to block your reception. If you can't get good signal because you've put yourself in front of a concrete building or a metal building, it's going to affect you negatively. I think that it's going to be a good idea to get an extended length of an HDMI cable. That way you can freely move around without being concerned. But in the meantime, be careful that you don't pull your VRX down with the cord that's attached to your goggles. I'm not sure if you're the type of pilot that moves around a lot while flying. I really don't, but I do prefer to stand rather than sit although it doesn't matter now because there's no antennas on your goggles the antennas are stationary and this is pretty sweet man the video is out of control so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to link some footage in for you guys I did have a crash and I broke a motor and stuff so I wasn't able to get you a lot of footage but I want to show you the footage that I did get 
once I formatted my SD card, I had no problems with recording footage, pulling it out of the VRX, putting it onto the computer, and being able to edit it and use it just like I would any other footage, or just like from a GoPro. So you won't have any issues with that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you'll enjoy the little bit of flight footage I did have, and I will have more updates and all kinds of stuff for you guys coming from the one and only Bite Frost aka DJI Killer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.